I'll, I'll then go to our next uh, speaker, who's Dr. John Petty. He comes from Dr. Moore's Neck of the Woods, Denver uh, Children's Hospital, where he did his pediatric surgery residency. Uh, and he's a pediatric surgeon and the head of the trauma center at uh, Wake Forest. And he's going to talk to us about the vacuum-assisted closure of, uh, of uh, managing uh, delayed closure of the abdomen. Dr. Petty. Thanks, Wayne and Marty. Are you guys able to hear me okay? We do. All right. I don't Turn know on your camera if you would. contact or not, but uh, you can put Joe Tepas's picture up there if you want to. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 you had to turn on your camera? Yeah, it's on. I, I can do. It says I can stop sharing or I can. No, no, no. Start, uh, start my webcam above uh, on the right hand side on the top. And then start sharing. And then start sharing. Yeah, I have video there. Hmm. That's okay. There we go. There's another button in the video. We'll see. Oh, there you go. Okay. And I'm not getting the little arrows to drive the PowerPoint here. Uh, so uh, maybe you guys can advance the slide for me. Okay, they should show up, but we'll advance until you see them. We see them. All right, I'll, boo. Okay, well, it's, it's great to be able to talk about uh, vacuum-assisted closure of the vac as a way to um, help manage a lot of different problems in pediatric trauma. We're going to spend uh, just a brief little bit at the beginning talking about the nature of negative pressure therapy, uh, what it works, how it does, and um, what you can use it for. But we're going to spend most of our time talking about different techniques and indications uh, and some of the things that might be different uh, for the pediatric patient compared to the adult. Uh, see, it, if you can hit the next slide, there we go. So the physicists in the audience will tell us that uh, negative pressure doesn't exist. Pressure is always a positive uh, commodity, uh, but for the rank and file of us, uh, we think of negative pressure as suction or vacuum, and so that's what we mean, applying a low, uh, steady suction to a wound to help promote healing. Uh, the commercially available the vac, vac has two settings, intermittent or continuous, and actually the basic science on it would suggest that intermittent uh, uh, settings promote granulation tissue faster, but for pediatric patients, I think continuous is a better way to go just because it's better tolerated. And I would say uh, as uh, emphatically as I could, it's not a substitute for uh, a surgeon or a good surgical judgment. Principles of debridement, infection control, uh, source management, nutrition, fluids, all those things are, are important uh, with or without a vac. It'll help you manage a wound, but it won't manage it for you. Um, this is a slide of uh, the vac in action. What does the vac do? How does it work? Well, it increases blood flow to a wound. Uh, basic science research in this would say that uh, a wound that has a vac on it has four times as much blood flow as one that doesn't. It promotes the formation of granulation tissue uh, two to three times as much. The uh, electron microscopy down at the bottom of that image shows on the, uh, the right panel um, a more physiologically oriented network of ve uh, vessels on a wound back wound. Um, related to bacterial count, not really clear if this actually decreases bacterial count. Animal studies would say yes, the human studies haven't borne it out, but I would say with, uh, without hesitation that the vac um, uh, will help with infection. You can use it in infected wounds and it certainly will not promote infection. It does manage the wound exudates. Uh, it can, you can measure the volume of fluid out from a wound. That's really important, particularly with small children. It's a closed system, so these are no longer really insensible or evaporative losses. And it helps take the edema out of the tissue. This is important as you think about primarily closing a wound in a delayed fashion or even bringing local flaps over to help cover a wound. There are some intriguing possibilities about what the VAC might do in the setting of a sustained uh, systemic inflammatory response. Uh, looking at the effluent from a VAC, particularly in the open abdomen, it's rich in pro-inflammatory pro cytokines like TNF-alpha. And so it may be that the VAC can help as a sink uh, for pro-inflammatory cytokines that might drive the SIRS. Who knows uh, if that's for, for sure or not, but stay tuned. The other thing a VAC can do for a wound is lower the stage of it, and that just is a way to reference if you're uh, de dealing with a wound that's ischemic or over bone or other sorts of things that are hard to uh, graft, the wound vac can promote granulation tissue over those. And so a wound that might have previously needed a free flap might be able to be managed with either local advancement flaps or even skin grafting. So it uh, improves the wound stage for definitive closure. Uh, in terms of children, I think it's a great choice for pediatric trauma. It, I would definitely recommend the continuous therapy uh, for that. Just uh, the, the discomfort of having a vac seems to be when the sponge goes up and down, but once it's set, uh, it's pretty comfortable. I think pain control 
Uh, you're not changing a dressing one, two, three times a day as you are with maybe some other choices for managing a wound, and the children really like this. That can be changed somewhere between two and five days, depending on the circumstances that you're using. And uh, it's simple to care for. Once it's set, um, as long as you keep a seal on it, there's not much more that needs to be done. This is a, a real winner, both with the nurses and with the families. In the right setting, these can even be taken home. Kids can be up and around walking when they're on extremities. It helps stabilize the wound. In terms of looking towards closure for a wound, it can increase uh, elasticity by taking the edema out. The image is a little kid who got attacked by his neighbor's pit bull, and you can see a big soft tissue defect. And the hope would be that as you get some of the edema out and you clean out the wound, you might be able to primarily close some from the edges and do a smaller graft when it comes time to close. Uh, I mentioned already for, uh, for our littlest patients, this can be a good way to go in terms of measuring the amount of fluid that comes out from the wound. It's important for a big wound and a small child um, because these are no longer insensible and you can give fluid replacement and manage their fluids accordingly. You can use it in infants. The standard pressure setting for most VACs is minus 125. If you're going to use it in infants or neonates, you might drop that to minus 75 um, for that sort of use. Take the next slide here. There we go. In terms of the technique, um, uh, these are just sort of the different components for using a VAC. You begin with your tissue. Uh, overlying that, you uh, often place a porous, non-adherent layer. Uh, this can be any one of a number of different things, adaptic mepatel or a perforated uh, a plastic dressing. The sponge goes over that. If you're using a wound vac directly in a soft tissue wound, a lot of people don't do the porous layer and they put the sponge right on it. That's certainly fine. Over the top of that goes an occlusive airtight dressing and the suction comes through that. And that's really all that there is to a vac. I would hope that everyone um, is at least somewhat familiar with this, but it, if you're not, these can be made from uh, readily available materials at most operating rooms. Um, we'll look at a few uses for it and just how these principles apply. Probably the most, uh, well, one of the most common uh, situations in which we use the vac is in the setting of a burn. Here's a little guy who had a contact burn from a hot muffler, took him for excision, and then uh, skin grafting. Uh, the next image shows the skin graft that's, that's in place. Um, and over that, you put a porous non-adherent dressing. In this case, it's uh, adaptic with a few staples in to uh, keep it from moving around. And then over the top of that, you put the vac sponge. And then Ioban is the occlusive dressing. Hook it up to the uh, minus 20, 125 suction and leave it in place for whatever your preference is for skin graft, three to five days. And then you take the vac off, staples out, and uh, here's an image of what it looks like when, when the uh, vac comes off. The nice thing about this for skin grafts is the vac promotes capillary ingrowth into your graft, so you get uh, hopefully better graft take. And it also protects it from the shear forces during those first few days uh, when the new vessels are growing into the graft. Another uh, common place, uh, and there, here's the skin a couple weeks later. Another common place for using the vac um, is uh, on the extremities. Uh, you can use it for circumferential burns. Here's an unfortunate little guy who had an immersion uh, skull burn from child abuse and the burns go all the way around his feet. The, one of the initial fears with using the vac in these situations would, that it, would be that it would serve as a tourniquet, and that really hasn't borne out. You can use it on hands and feet. It's not a bad idea to watch the cap refill of the toes when you do it, but it can help with skin grafts even in somewhat challenging places. Uh, the budget vac, uh, again, the commercially available vac is nice. There are a lot of advantage, uh, advantages to it, but you don't have to have it in order to take advantage of some of the principles of negative pressure therapy. Uh, again, beginning with your tissue, you can place a porous non-adherent layer, adaptic mepatel, perforated uh, plastic dressing. Uh, the sponge, you can use any sort of porous surgical uh, material, Vatex sponges or uh, other sterile foams uh, for the packing material. The back works, it brings everything towards the sponge, and so you want to have something that has some deformability to it to make your wound smaller. And the occlusive dressing, Ioban, Opsite, Tegaderm, uh, and then the suction could be anything uh, that you can connect to a controlled suction like a JP bulb. Probably the best example for this budget sort of low-cost vac is, uh, is the abdominal vac, a champion by a lot of people, but I think uh, uh, Don Barker at UT Chattanooga has a great series, and these are actually images from his, uh, his series. Uh, just, but it just illustrates the principles of negative pressure therapy for the open abdomen. So uh, you can start with a bio drape or a bowel bag and perforate it with a scalpel, and that serves as your porous non-adherent layer, uh, placing that in your open abdomen over the viscera all the way to the gutters on both sides up to the diaphragm and down to the pelvis uh, to keep the sponge from sticking to the underlying viscera. Um, 
Then you, uh, in place of a sponge, you can use, again, a lot of different options. This is a sterile surgical towel laid over the, uh, the bowel bag. Um, and then you inlay your, uh, your suction. This is a JP drains or what they used for this series, brought out through separate stab incisions and connected to a Y connector uh, from the bulbs used to uh, get wall suction that you can control for that. Here they are connecting it to the Y connector for that, and then the occlusive dressing goes on top. Uh, when uh, Dr. Barker published his series, he calculated the cost of this to be about $49 uh, in terms of the cost of materials. Uh, most of these things, again, are readily available in most operating rooms. So once you've done laparotomy uh, two or three and moved from damage control to definitive uh, treatment, uh, you're still left with the problem of the open abdomen. Can the vac help you close it? Uh, I think it really can. So here's just an illustration of one way uh, to use that um, to help close the belly uh, would be to start uh, with the uh, viscera there. Again, a perforated bowel bag is the next uh, layer. You can see illustrated there at the bottom, there's a big nylon suture in the skin. Uh, you can leave full thickness flaps, skin, subcutaneous tissue, fascia, and muscle all as one while you're, while you're getting to a place uh, where you can close the fascia uh, primarily. And then place the vac sponge over the bowel bag. Um, everything, again, when the vac is uh, activated, pulls toward the sponge. So if you can get the sponge underneath the, uh, the fascia and close skin on top of it, it will help not only with the ascites and the tissue edema, but also begin to pull those flaps toward one another. And here it is with the uh, running nylon. That's in skin only. There's no sutures in the fascia at this point. Closed over the sponge, and then with the uh, suction and occlusive dressing over the top. Uh, you come back a couple days later, uh, take that off, and then you begin to close what fascia you can. Hopefully at this point, a lot of the edema is gone from the uh, tissues and the viscera, and you can start closing the fascia. Close what you can without making it too tight, and then you can replace the same type of dressing the perforated bowel bag, the vac sponge, and closed skin over the top, and then you can uh, go back um, as often as you need to until you can get the fascia closed uh, all the way, uh, and then you're done. So it's a really uh, nice adjunct for management of the open abdomen. In terms of uh, looking forward, what are some new ways to use the vac? When the vac was initially developed, the thought was it ought not be used in infected wounds, and I think there's experience to say that you can safely use it in infected wounds. Uh, you might use an adjunct to help with the infection. Certainly, again, there's no substitute for good surgical judgment in terms of managing the uh, uh, debridement, ischemia, nutrition, or systemic antibiotics. This is a, a silver impregnated nylon uh, that you can put on the wound directly and put the vac sponge over it, and that applies silver to the wound, uh, so you get uh, antimicrobial um, contact with the wound, but you can still improve the blood flow, manage the effluents, and that sort of thing. They also make a silver impregnated sponge that can go in uh, an infected wound. Um, uh, in terms of viscera, uh, they do make a white sponge that has smaller uh, pores in it. Uh, this does not promote granulation tissue uh, uh, quite to the extent that the black sponge does, but it's probably safer to use on viscera, things like enterocutaneous fistulas. I think one of the neatest uh, uses of the vac is uh, using it over a regenerative tissue matrix. Uh, there are a lot of uh, dermal or sometimes fascial substitutes that you can use, and I I think there's good data to say that the vac helps uh, ingrowth of uh, the native tissues into this much faster. So you get capillary formation and migration of fibroblasts into these um, uh, structures and hopefully become incorporated into native tissues, allowing you to graft over them sooner and have better success. So those are some sort of novel ways to use the vac. In terms of pediatric trauma patients, we talked about uh, soft tissue and burns, using it for the open abdomen. Uh, in terms of uh, the chest experience, probably the biggest pediatric chest experience is in congenital heart surgery, where they uh, leave the uh, sternotomy open and close the chest or managing uh, sternal wound infections. Uh, neonates, here's a little guy with a, a complex abdominal wall defect. Again, it's safe to use in babies, but you might drop the pressure to minus 75. Uh, this is a slide from a, a manuscript that came out earlier this year where they used it on brain. So these were, it was a series of five patients that had complex cranial defects including a dural defect, and the neurosurgeons uh, used a dural substitute, alloderm or some other uh, dural substitute, put the vac sponge over that and uh, left it in place and actually brought blood flow into the dural substitute from the brain itself, and then were able to skin graft over it. So I think there's a lot of creative thinking going on about what might uh, apply in terms of using the vac in uh, pediatric or even in adult trauma. So we'll just close with the new concepts. Again, understanding negative pressure therapy, uh, why it does what it does, how it accelerates healing in terms of increasing blood flow, granulation tissue uh, formation, 
and also downstaging the staging the wound. It's a versatile use. Uh, certainly, it's good for soft tissue wounds, but, but can be used for a lot more. Oh, and I think it's a great choice for a lot of our uh, pediatric wounds, burns, and other uses. Uh, kids tolerate it real well, and um, there are a lot of benefits to using it in our smallest patients. And I'll look forward to hearing questions from people as we go. Thanks. Dr. Petty, fantastic. Uh, really outstanding summary. Uh, I think that's going to be very useful for many people all over the world. Uh, especially the technique of how to put that together. We've got a lot of questions for you, so uh, we're going to get to those at the Q&A if you could stick around for the panel session. And you can start on the chat, too, if you want. You know, start yeah, chatting. Thanks. Uh,